Hello and welcome back to the channel. So this will be um, episode 3 of uh, Base Malts for my malt series. Um, we've looked at Marius Otto, we've looked at Golden Promise, we've looked at Pale, we've looked at Vienna, Munich, Wheat and Rye. Now moving over to Heritage Malts. Um, I do like to brew quite a few Heritage recipes. Um, I've spoke about it before, Ron Patterson does a fantastic book, uh, I think it's called Let's Brew. A brilliant book if you want to look at some heritage brews. I've done porters, I've done milds, I've done IPAs from there. Absolutely brilliant recipe and, and work really well. So, I want to look at heritage base malts. In every, in every video I've said that basically a base malt is a, a malt which you use from, it could be 50% if it's a wheat, up to 80, 100% whole base malts in a beer. Uh, but generally, it's between 80 90% of the grain bill. Um, and then you can have speciality malts to make up the rest of that to, to get your 100% grain bill or, or, or some sugars. Um, so, heritage malts, what I have today, I have Chevalier, hope I'm saying that right, Chevalier, Plumage Archer, Bark, Pilsner, and Hanna. Now, um, so, Heritage, the Chevalier, a little bit, the, it was like mainly used between 1820 to 1920. Uh, they say it's Marisotta, dialed up to 11. Um, Plumage Archer, 1900, sort of came in and started to replace um, Chevalier in uh, most beers. Um, it was a better, they could get better yields and it was a lot better for the farmers, more crop, and then uh, they was getting uh, more you could you could get more of them sugars out as well for, for the brew it just seemed a lot easier malt to use um, but it did start to lose a little bit of the flavor which chevalier uh it brings to the party so you sort of you know the balance is better yields for the plumage a little bit less flavor but this is more flavor not so good for crops um but yeah and, and also the getting to extract that sugar in the in the mash is a takes a longer time so obviously more time more process more more money um and then we have uh, which was the one was hannah it's basically hannah is a czech uh, malt um pilsner urquell one of the first ones to use hannah chris maltins just just say chris maltins have brought back chevalier plumage archer and uh the hannah as well um they have started to regrow them bit like a speciality series and the home brewer um, has had a chance to get hold of some obviously I, I, I was going to be straight in there to try these so you've got Hannah and then you've got Bark Pilsner and there's different ones from Bark and it's a it's a Way, Wayman maltings that do that Bark Pilsner um, it, it was used widely wildly sorry why widely wild why am I saying wild it's heritage malt and it's not wild well it's wild I don't know I'm just talking nonsense. Um, it's widely used uh, in, in Germany before other varieties came along. Um, again, it, the other varieties that came along had better yields, but they say that the, the Bark Pilsner was a much better flavour. Um, I've, only, I've only recently brewed of it, so I've not tasted it in a final brew. But today, I'll taste it raw, I'll steep some, and I'll taste it again, and let's see what these malts bring to my palate. It's not, I'm not saying it's to everyone's palate, just to my palate. And what I will do, because I've got to do it on last video, I've got a little bit of water to go in between, because in the last one, at the end of it, tasting the four malts, they all blended together and they tasted absolutely fantastic blended together. Um, but the individuals, I think I was getting a little bit muddled. So let's go straight in with the Chevalier malt. So my socks are dialed up to 11 is what they, they say. Quite dry, really malty. Mm. That's really malty, not overly sweet. It's just really <laughs> malty, is unbelievable. 
bready, toasty, pretty much like a, a cereal, a really pleasant cereal, like a, I can't explain what cereal is, but it's like a cereal, quite drying, um, that, that might have something to do with the mashing, why you need to mash it longer, because it seems to be absorbing in my mouth, and it's drying my mouth out really quick, it's really malty, definitely bready, it's got a nice balanced sweetness there as well, it's not overly sweet, that's pleasant, that really is, mm. let's throw water on myself now, give me a jar let's go into that one. Plumage. Let's go. Okay. See, to me, a bit grainy, a little bit more sweet. Um, it's like, um, I don't know if you've ever, you can imagine freshly baked bread and the dough, the, the smell of that dough, I'm sort of getting that in the flavour here, like freshly baked bread, really nice, it's, it's coming across a lot sweeter than Chevalier did, um, again that might be the reason why they moved into it, more sugars, easier to extract. I don't know, no expert on that, just what I'm tasting. So that is more sweeter than Chevalier, and it's a little bit like undercooked bread, a bit more doughy in the flavour than a, a, a completed uh, baked bread. Um, sweeter, yeah, definitely. Okay, grainy. Hannah, which is the, the one that we use in Pearl's Network well, very, very, first. very light as well, very light coloured malt, grain sorry. Sweet. That's a bit like, I'm, I'm going to say bread again, it's really bready as well, but that's more, not on the, not undercooked bread, but more of a, like a white loaf, fresh bread, fresh white loaf, tasting that, so it's got a sweetness, and a fresh bread, not really moving on from that, if I'm honest, that's, that's just staying around, that, that, that flavour. Hmm. Okay, so the last one. This is the Wayman Bark Pills nut. This is also fairly lightly coloured. That's less sweet, but more malty. It's got more malt flavour than the Hannah. Not as sweet. And the breadiness is, is a bit dialed back. So where the Hannah was more bready and sweeter, this is a bit more dialed back. The more malty flavour. And not as sweet as the, uh, the Hannah. It's really interesting. It's also a grainy flavour there, a little bit grassy, hmm, that's really interesting, um, I don't know, I haven't got anything really more to say on them, what does it say, well, here you go, Chevalier deep malt bread marmalade, I didn't get marmalade, uh, Plumage Archer 
um, less flavoured in Chevalier, sweet caramel. Well, I can, I, I can agree with that one, the plumber Archer. Hannah, bready, crisp. Yeah, that's what I was saying about the, the Hannah. Um, yeah, more. Bart Pilsner. Um, <sighs> what's the saying? Fuller body and good head retention for a Bart Pilsner. Um, so I don't know a lot about the flavour on that. Like I said, these are fairly new to me, these ones, these Heritage Malts. Well, yeah, let me do the uh, steeping. We'll come back and we'll taste them and uh, see what happens, see if anything changes. Okay, cheers. So we've done the steeping now um, and we've got the products here basically, well products, the work, the steeped grains. Um, so the Chevalier and the Plumage Archer look very similar and then you've got the Pilsner ones. Um, the Bart Pilsner has got more colour than the Hannah, I don't know if you can really see that. So I'd be interested in this. So let's go straight in for the Chevalier. Um, what was he saying for this? Deep malt bread marmalade. I don't know. Let's see. Let's see if you can get the lid off. So there it is. Really nice malty toasty. Um, fresh bread. I keep saying fresh bread for these malts, but it really is malty. A little bit grainy. Not overly sweet. Um, but obviously, this hasn't this hasn't been. You know, we've got to remember as all these malts haven't been boiled at this stage. They've only been steeped. So I'm tasting that flavour there. Um, so it's really. I'm, <laughs> When I did the, the Marisotta, um, that was the one that uh, had quite a lot of flavour. Um, and this is quite, you know, it's matching it. It's, it's quite complex. It's bread, it's definitely malt, there's a sweetness. Maybe that's sort of the same with the, the same the marmalade. There's also crusty, a crusty toastiness to this malt as well. And the smell is just like freshly baked bread. That's the best, the best way. Not getting any biscuits, not getting that. It's all bready, um, toasty, um, sweet. So, yeah, that's interesting. Chevalier, I've done a couple of home brews of this and I've really enjoyed them. I've done like a, um, an English, a traditional English IPA with them. Um, I've done uh, Porter and uh, they've come out fantastic. So, yeah, I really think that Chevalier brings a lot of flavour and I think it does bring more once you start to boil it as well. Um, so yeah, so that's uh, Chevalier. Move on to the next one, let's have a sip of water. Plumage Archer, looks very similar to Chevalier. <clears throat> Aroma. This is more grainy, definitely. Definitely more grainy in the uh, aroma. I think, <sighs> I, I, I think I said this before as well. It reminds me of um, when I make bread and it, you've got the raw dough. It's a bit like that, mate, the, the flavour. Uh, sorry, the aroma. Definitely more sweet than Chevalier straight away. Um, the breadiness has pulled back some. So it's not as bready, but it's definitely more sweet. And it's grainy. It's got more grain going on, which again, is really pleasant. Um, what did they say about this? Um, sweet caramel. I just get it sweet, um, grainy, and the breadiness is pulled back. So yeah, that that again. I mean, that blended with Chevalier might be a good combination uh, for the base malts. But even on its own, that would be a, a lovely base malt to use. It's good, like I say, it's not overpowering. Um, it's got that sweetness there. So yeah, that's what I'm getting from Plumage Archer.
heritage. Move on to the Pilsners. Go for Hannah. This is these, the, Han, the Hannah, I think I said the Hannah, the Plumage Archer, and the Chevalier um, Chris Maltins in the UK, uh, where you can get these grains from if you, if you want to give them a go. Grainy, a little bit grassy on the aroma. And if you really, really get in there, you're getting that raw dough again. You know, seems to be a little bit of a theme there. The Plumage Archer and Hannah have got very similarities in the aroma. A little bit more grassy. And there's that dough again. It's dough. It's, honestly, it's the only way I can explain this. It's like dough or just undercooked bread and you taste it and you, you get a bit, bit doughy. That's a, the, the, like, that's the flavour. Um, so yeah, you're going to say white bread. It's bready. Um, not cookie dough, more bread dough. Um, grainy. Bit, bit grainy. Bread dough. That's what I'm saying. So the Hannah, um, once it's done the steep, is just bringing like a bready dough, uh, undercooked bread. And with all these malts, I'm certain once you boil them, and then you start, you know, obviously when you add hop to change, but once you start to boil them, and that heat, um, and it starts to caramelise the malts as well, it changes again. I'm just doing these after steep, just to. Give me an idea of how I want to build recipes going forward. So yeah, that's what I get from that. Doughy, a little bit grassy and grainy. And uh, I can understand why that's uh, Pilsner because it's not overpowering at all. It's really not, but it's uh, it's nice. And you can imagine, uh, well, I've done a Kolsch style beer with Hannah and I've uh, got a Pilsner. Uh, just recently gone into bottles that's got the Hannah as well. So yeah, it's going to be interesting to see what that's like uh, with Pilsner. Sorry, this is the Bark Bark Pils by uh, Weyman, Weyman uh, Maltins. This is definitely, it's got more aroma than Hannah. It was darker than Hannah as well. And it's got more aroma. This has got more bread. Definitely more of the, the, the bread that's fresh bread out of the oven, not the slightly doughy bread. I hope I'm making sense with them descriptions. Now this isn't as sweet as Hannah. So this is more, this is more bready, definitely bready. I'm not getting biscuits at all. No, no digestive biscuits, which I've had in other base malts. This is just pure, Bready, um, a little bit of grain there, but for me, full on, full on white loaf bread, fresh out of the oven. Honestly, that's what I'm getting. So again, that that'd be get some sour hops in there, a bit of that lemon from the sour hops coming together with that bready. Once it's boiled, become a bit more toasty. I think that is a it's a cracking uh, malt as well. Um, if you want to go and try some of these heritage malts in beers that you can purchase, I'd say go and have a look at Cheshire Brewhouse. Um, he uses uh, Chevalier and Plumage Archer. He may have moved on to some of these others as well now, but he does uh, some cracking beers with them. Um, so that's Cheshire Brewhouse. And also, I think it's Lost and Grounded have used Hannah Malt. I don't know if they're still producing the beer, uh, but I'll, show, I'll put some links in because the Craft Beer Channel did the Hannah Malt and went and visited Lost and Grounded and they did like a lager. Uh, and they also spoke about the Cheshire Brew House as well and uh, using theirs. I'll just put some links in and it gives you an opportunity to go out there and try some of these uh, heritage malts in uh, some of the beers. Okay, um, so we'll be moving on to speciality malts from here. We've done all the base malts that I have, uh, in, what I've been using, what I've going forward. Uh, in stock so now I'm going to move on to speciality malts so hopefully hope you enjoyed that and I'll see you on the next one cheers